Have a look at an overview of hot deserts. So they have the following characteristics in hot deserts. There'll be less, the climate will have less than 250 millimetres of annual rainfall. The type of rainfall is highly variable, so it might only rain every three years. And the temperatures can range from 45 degrees during the day uh, to five degrees uh, Celsius at night. So there's big temperature function um, changes as well. Now, animals uh, can have been successful at adapting to these environments. So some sort of animals that are present will be lizards, scorpions, snakes, and insects. And mammals that live in the desert are normally nocturnal and very small. The birds usually move elsewhere uh, when the conditions become most hostile, although uh, a few, there are a few permanent residents who have adapted to be there all the time. The soil is usually shallow and dry, and it's normally gravelly in texture. And the fertility of the land is low because there's virtually no leaf fall, so none of the nutrients get uh, put back into the into the, the soil after a plant um, sheds its leaves. So many desert inhabitants grow crops near to wells or natural springs, and indigenous populations are usually nomadic. Uh, which means that they are constantly traveling in order to find sources of water. So what they'll do is they'll move to a certain place in the desert and they'll find the, some water, they'll stay there until the water is dried up and then they'll move on to, um, to another place. And plant life is rare purely because there's such low levels of rainfall and um, we know that plants need water to survive. The plants that do succeed um, are usually short and often um, only appear when the rain comes. And some examples of those sorts of um, plants would be thorn bushes and cacti. So common characteristics of hot deserts, uh, number one is that they are sparse. Um, they have, uh, of, of plants, sorry, in, in deserts, they're not often very short um, and they have short life cycles. So, fragility and independence in interdependence in hot deserts. So hot deserts are interdependent. This means that all the different parts uh, depend on one another. So a change to a particular part of the ecosystem will have a knock-on effect on the other parts. Additionally, they have, they're also very fragile, which means that a really small change can make a really big difference. To, to other creatures or plants in, in the environment. So the sparse nature of vegetation in hot deserts means that there is only enough food to support animal populations that are in low density, which is the same as saying they're in low numbers. Um, the soil provides the plants with nutrients. The animals get nutrients and water from the plants they eat. And animals and plants uh, reproduce by spreading, uh, animals help plants, sorry, reproduce by spreading plant seeds in their dung. So there's a real um, interdependent and linking between all of those. So, and then people and uh, plants and animals are also linked. So, to grow crops, people must develop systems of irrigation, of irrigating the land. Now, irrigation just means getting water to the land so that crops can grow. If people take too much water from the wells, the water level underground will reduce, which makes survival a struggle for some plant species um, and also then uh, has a knock-on effect on the animals that depend on those plant species. The hot and dry conditions mean that rates of evaporation from soil are really high, uh, which makes it difficult for plants to grow um, because it reduces the amount of water available to them. So what size of animal populations can be supported by vegetation in hot deserts? Well, that's just small, small populations. Hot deserts are independent, interdependent and fragile. How would you describe most of the indigenous populations in the hot deserts? Now remember that's nomadic. Nomadic means they travel around in search of water. The sparse nature of vegetation in hot deserts mean that there is only enough food to support 
small animal populations. Some examples of those might be uh, some hedgehogs that live uh, in small groups or are isolated, uh, isolated on their own, and also possibly ostriches. So characteristics of soil in hot deserts, remember that they're dry, they have low fertility, and they're very shallow. So that means the roots will find it hard to find water in them. The hot and dry conditions in deserts mean that rates of evaporation of water from the soil are high. This makes it difficult for plants to grow. Which the following describes hot desert ecosystem. Remember that these, these systems are interdependent, as that means there's a lot of connections between the animals, the plants, the soil, and go on, and they're all very uh, dependent on each other. And they're also very fragile, so small changes can make big changes to animals' lives. <laughs>